Today I want to talk about this amazing book, Global History of Architecture. My version is in Brazilian Portuguese, so I, know, I don't know if there are some changes. And my version has my dog's bite in there, so uh, it might be different from yours. So let's jump right in. The, the real importance of this book, and you can see it's a very thick book, uh, is what I've discussed in my video about Gabriel Yeganian's and James Pack's work. Both links will be in the description. The understanding of functionality of architecture. You can see that uh, the authors uh, separate uh, the whole book into time into a very big timeline that goes all the way from early civilizations growing to modern days. So discussing what's happening around the world, what buildings were being made, and how different cultures uh, communicate with each other to really grow on that understanding. And now that we've seen uh, the index uh, and, and the whole timeline, let's jump right into the early civilizations. It's interesting that on top of the timeline, the book also gives a map of what's happening around the world, what are the main buildings that were uh, being constructed at that time. And the great thing is that Francis Ching, um, that is part of the whole development of the book, is a great illustrator as well. So you will see a lot of his illustrations throughout the book. I don't know if other people collaborated, but a lot of the illustrations are his. Uh, so definitely that is a great addition to the book. You will see cutaway views, top view, plan view, elevations, perspective views, isometric, uh, as well as photographs and maps of all the places. And, and that will spread and, and repeat throughout the whole book. So it's, it's really interesting to see. Uh, and, and, and as you can see right now, early Egyptian civilization and uh, going back to South America and jumping back and forth to understand what has been developing uh, all over the world. Uh, so China, uh, Crete uh, in early uh, Greek civilizations, back to Egypt and, and, and things were being built all together. So it's interesting that the book does that. Uh, so when we get to the communication, as I mentioned before, between civilizations, we will understand what kind of learnings pass through uh, each one of them. Uh, the Aztecs, Mayan, and Incas have a lot of communication in there, a lot of trade. So definitely one uh, of those civilizations will impact the other with its beliefs, with construction systems, technologies, and so on. Uh, and, and even earlier civilizations, Oaxaca in, in Mexico, they will definitely uh, start building the foundation for everything that came later on. Jumping right ahead, we go more into Persia as we are in 400 BC. Uh, AC there is in Portuguese. So before Christ, and, and we see the early, early development of Greece and, and the growth, a lot of the canons that we'll see later on in the classical uh, revival era are being dis, uh, dis, discovered slash created. I, I think the latter is is best term. Uh, you see in there more of a Eastern uh, Oriental architecture and a lot of the reinforcement walls, symmetry in the buildings, houses and vernacular structures. And that's very interesting as well. A lot of the books that I have on architecture tend to focus a lot on the fancy, famous buildings. And this one discusses a lot of the materials and the construction that went to, into vernacular before going into more uh, of the famous, as we see here, the Colosseum. So it's, it's also a back and forth because a lot of the discoveries, even if, if we look at the Maya, and I learned a lot for, uh, of that from Gabriel Ganyan, a lot of the big buildings are built on top of the technology they understood from the vernacular uh, and households that they have. So there is a lot of conversation between different architecture. 
you can see uh, the Pantheon uh, in there, one of the most impressive buildings ever built. We are now after uh, Christ, so AD to 200 AD. So a lot of the Roman buildings. Uh, this dome is one of the biggest engineering mysteries, how they were able to do that so early on without a lot of the technology. It was probably a lot of people uh, pouring down concrete, as this is the biggest unsupported concrete structure uh, in antiquity, and still today it would be really hard to make without any cracks in the structure. Uh, so it's really interesting to understand what they were doing, how they were doing, and how can we learn uh, still nowadays from, from that. Going uh, forward, a lot of different plan views, as I mentioned before, and I really want to stress that out. Buildings are made to be walked around, to be, uh, be lived in, uh, used. So functionality goes a long way. You can see there a map of a city. Uh, so the overall distribution of that city. So just going back there, you can see how all the buildings interconnect uh, and, and, and communicate with each other. The, um, the amount of thought that was done on the construction of those cities. So as you can see, a lot of back and forth uh, around the world. Development during this era, we are 400 AD now going into uh, 600 AD. So a lot of big buildings, Hagia Sophia, a lot of the famous places that we've been to or we would love to go to uh, are here and are discussed uh, in depth. So really, really informative. I haven't gone through all the content. Uh, it's, it's really hard. If you study this book and you have suggestions of uh, how to go about the study, what I'm doing is focusing on one civilization and understanding its growth, uh, but definitely a read through the whole book, I think would be also really informative, something I haven't done and I would love to, to take the time to do uh, some, 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 sometime in the future. So just flipping through again uh, more quickly. So we can't cover everything here. It's a very, very big book. All links are going to be in the description to the videos I mentioned, as well as uh, links for, for buying the book. Please do come back in the comments. Let's uh, open a conversation and discuss how to tackle this book again. I think the community can share uh, learnings, knowledge, uh, and all of that, and it would be super helpful for everyone. So we're getting closer uh, to modern times, so uh, six, 1600 AD. So we get closer in a lot of the buildings that we already know and stood the test of time. So the Taj Mahal in there, as well as m more uh, of modern constructions, cathedrals, uh, government buildings. And it's interesting that it goes to some places that are not common tourist attractions. So that's great as well. So we can learn from different types of architecture other than the same things that we've seen in popular culture and uh, the media all over. If you are an environment designer, architecture designer for the game industry or movie industry, definitely finding a lot of different references here, learning from them and uh, applying that to, to your work will go a long way. So that's pretty much it. Uh, final thought, uh, pages on, on the books here. And uh, we get to modern times and modern architecture. So I hope this was informative, very quick. I'll definitely come back to the content uh, in the future. I, as I said before, I'm going through that on 
Gabriel Yaganian's course on architecture for world building. So I definitely recommend that course as well, as well as other content on architecture design. You can find a lot uh, out there, Tyler Edling, Alex Ruiz. So I have links in the description. I hope this was informative and I definitely hope to see you all in another video. Take care.